Hello and welcome to another exclusive Good E-Reader video. This is Nick. And this is Marcus. Today we're going to take a look and give you a full review hardware-wise and jump into the menus and settings for the Ataco Jetbook Lite. So this is more or less the full uh, e-reader experience uh, from Ataco. It does Adobe DRM, so if you buy books from Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Borders, uh, via Adobe Digital Editions, you can load up EPUB files straight into this device. Uh, just to give you some specs, um, you know, it does uh, run on batteries, so it runs on four AA batteries. And those are provided, but they're no-name brand batteries, so don't expect a ton of battery life out of here. It reads a lot of different e in ebook formats, and that's the main thing about this. It does EPUB, MOBI, PRC, RTF text, FB2, as well as PDFs. Uh, for images, it does JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, and uh, BMP formats. And um, one of the big things that Taco has going for it that's very strong is that it does support for a lot of different languages, both in the menu system and ebooks. So uh, whether you speak Dutch, German, uh, Farsi, uh, French, and everything else, uh, everything from like Italian to Polish, it supports all of that. Uh, it even supports uh, Vietnamese, and uh, it has uh, different dictionaries. Uh, support so for a lot of different European languages so you have built-in dictionary support for uh, German and Sp Spanish as well as English it comes preloaded with the CIA world Factbook. it does bookmarks auto page churn functionality uh, lots of adjustable fonts and so on and so let's uh, take a look at some of the hardware okay so it is a five inch screen corner to corner that's how you measure screens you'll see that it has book turn book page turning buttons up down left right okay menu orientation swap which will not work on the main screen but it will work on most of the pictures in the books zoom or find and the back button you'll see that it has physical buttons here 0 1 2 3 through 9 written in English and I'm only going to assume Russian or something. I'm not too sure what those are and why they specifically put those there, as they are made in China, so I'm not too sure. On the top you have the SD card. It is standard SD. It's not micro or mini, but you can use the adapters. SD, and you have the micro USB slots. One of the nice things about it is a lot of Jetbook's other products just have, uh, especially the Jetbook Mini, for the SD card, it has SD slot wide open into the device, whereas you notice with this, uh, it actually has a cover, so uh, you won't get any dust or sand or anything like that if you're on vacation or, or reading it, so that's one of the nice little features on this. Nothing going on on this side. On the bottom you have the power button, you would press it once for standby, press and hold to turn off, and nothing on this side and I showed you the top and this is where you would put the batteries there are four AA batteries that are included in the box and you just slide it on like so is that a hard reset button on the back? good eye this would be where you'd put a pin or if you have a I don't know some sort of long pencil or tool it would do a hard reset for uh, factory settings on the back uh, one of the reasons why you would do that is, you know, with all electronics, sometimes it will freeze and totally be unresponsive. Um, the power button really won't work. Instead of just uh, taking all the batteries out and, and doing that, you can just do like a hard reboot or a hard reset, you know, with a, a bobby pin, you know, anything that really can fit <coughs> in there. Exactly. So let's take a look at some of the settings that uh, the Jetbook Lite comes with loading screen all right so under the you have four main categories user settings system settings so on we're going to user settings first as Marcus has mentioned they do have an extensive list of languages you can choose from so you would choose the appropriate language there now that I see this looks like this language the number one which I cannot pronounce are where most of these characters come from so if you speak that one we'll choose that one away 
Auto power off is how long you want the device to stay on without turning off. You can choose it to never and have it run constantly or you can choose it to any range of minutes that you see here so it will turn off and you won't have to worry about oh I forgot to turn it off. It'll just automatically turn off for you. And that's good because um, by itself the batteries are good for usually about 24 hours of a non-stop reading. Exactly. Auto turn page if you're reading a book and you can't be bothered to press one of these buttons you can have the auto turn page to 5 seconds all the way to 60 depending on the amount of text that is on the screen. So that is that's a good option to at least have there. Yeah, no other e-reader we've ever had has really had like an auto page turn option and you know we've reviewed close to about 30 or 40 different e-readers so this is the exactly. first e-reader that I've seen uh, really diving into it that has you can configure it to automatically turn pages. Exactly. Fonts, you have two preloaded ones, Arial and Verdana. Preloaded fonts there. Under system settings, you have the serial number. Uh, battery life will pop up. That is the amount of battery life we have right now, 100%. Memory capacity to see how much you're using on your SD card and your actual device. Firmware version would show you what ver uh, version of the firmware you are currently on. So if you ever forget, you can always check here and upgrade it um, whenever the new firmwares come out. And to upgrade firmware, you would want to hook it up to your computer uh, via the USB cable that comes with your device. Because uh, the Jetbook Lite does not have any Wi-Fi or internet capabilities on it, the only way to upgrade the firmware, which we recommend you do uh, because it does have support for more fonts and uh, more functionality uh, in it, so we definitely recommend that you go to our Good E-Reader forum where we have all of the recent Jetbook firmware updates as well as step-by-step -step instructions on how to load it uh, directly into your device. Exactly, and after loading it into your device, you would choose Upgrade Patch, and if I click it right now, it'll say File Not Found because it did not go to the Goody Reader forum and download the patch onto the device yet. So you can return, you could restore defaults if you wish as well by choosing number 6. Um, that would restore your device to factory defaults, and um, I would assume with this it would delete all the information on the memory capacity, whereas the card, I am not entirely sure on that. So we will have to test that. Internal file manager, you have the books. This is what your books would be shown here. Manuals, books, and pictures. Do not have any pictures on the device at the moment. You would. This would all be easy to... You would... Uh, here, I'll show you here. You would plug the USB mini into here and the USB standard into your PC or computer or laptop and drag and drop pictures and books and all sorts of other files into the appropriate folder so yeah the jetbook like doesn't have any music functionality so you're pretty well just reading books and you're looking at pictures and again uh, JPEGs, GIFs, PMGs and BMPs are the picture formats that it reads so exactly. pretty standardized as far as the ability to read a lot of different uh, formats and uh, he mentioned that there are no music so that is actually a good note because I did not mention that there are no speakers or headphone jacks or music compatibility with this in any way. Yeah, so you definitely won't, uh, if you're looking for a device to run audiobooks and things like that, you definitely want to skip this and move on to uh, a device that has a little bit more multimedia functions. Exactly. SD card file manager, where this would be the option to choose if you had an SD card slot in there carrying various files, books, art, upgrade patches, and so on. I'm not going to click that because I do not have an SD card in there, but it would be very similar to the internal file manager, except this would be the internal memory, this would be the card memory. So we're going to exit out of here and go look at... This would be where you would choose the pictures and view slideshow options, um, picture by picture, zoom, and so forth. We do not have any pictures right now, but pictures have, are, are, are not really that confusing in terms of what device you use. It's pretty straightforward. You view a picture press right to go to the next one and so forth. We're going to click on books now. 
see it load up and these will be the books that are on the preloaded device I did not put any SD card in there there are not books that I have loaded from a third-party source or my computer so we have various genres here children's detectives fiction let's just choose on fiction reel here <coughs> All right, let's just choose Herbert Wells' The Time Machine, just to show you some text on this. And you can see we have uh, studio lights here, and even with the light on the screen, I'll wait for some text to show. Hourglass. Even with the uh, light on the screen, very easy to read. Very simple to read. There's, yeah, there's no glare. Despite the fact that it's not e ink, exactly. but it's TFTLCD, uh, it is pretty readable. Unless you light. shoot it exactly at the beam of light, even then it doesn't really diffuse the letters too badly. It's a very readable device. So you can change pages in various ways. You can press right, and you'll see the percentage of the book completion increase. You can choose these book buttons here. and you can use this pretty cool slider bar now I have noticed something with this slider bar you can move it um, down to proceed pages and up to go back now when you want to go up right where you're holding the device and I'm, I know there's various ways you can hold the device if you were to use this slider bar but the way you'd regularly read a book and hold the device when you push up on this the battery cover actually comes off very easily I have noticed so I'm going to show you a side view I'm going to push up and the battery cover just fell off um, it, it's not too big of an issue it's just it, it has to be noted because there's various ways to turn the pages but that's something I've noticed that the battery cover is very easy to remove so when you're using the slider bar and you notice that you're using you're using it and it falls off that's not a defect that is just the placement of the two pieces. As yeah, so you just, you really want to be careful with the right. way that you're holding it because, you know, one misplaced thing could hit the batteries out in the middle of your book. Exactly. You know, not only will the, the back case come off, which is mad inconvenient, but, you know, who knows, battery could fly out in the middle of your book, you know, the device is just, like, shut off. Exactly. Now you can press uh, the magnifying glass to choose your font settings bigger if you have trouble seeing various font settings. Yeah, it's nice to be able to do that on a fly, and as you can see, the Jetbook Lite's pretty responsive as far as, you know, he flipped... Very res very responsive um, buttons, all, just in general. No matter what you do, everything's just pops right up when you want it. This is the orientation button right here. As I mentioned before, it does not work on the home screen, which isn't too important, but it does work on books and pictures, so you'd press it and it would switch orientation. So this might be a better way to actually read it in this mode because the chances of you being able to inadvertently hit that button to uh, hit the battery out would be less, you know, it's less obtrusive this way. Exactly. So I know if I were to do some serious reading on this device, that would this would probably be the way that I would do it because you can see your thumb is right by the batteries or right by like the page turning things. Exactly. They've set it up in a way where if you hold it up top, you have it, the controls right at your thumb. If you hold it at the bottom, you have the controls right at your thumb. If you hold it on the side, you have controls everywhere. It's very, very it's laid out very well in terms of being able, very read readable, very readable when it comes to books and uh, PDFs and what have you. It's the controls are always there, minus the slight defect. I don't know if it if it was. Um, a problem for anybody else, but we found it that it is kind of yeah. It's one of the few drawbacks that we really noticed on the device right away. You can press the. It's kind of like a right-click button. It brings up your secondary options: dictionary, bookmark list, uh, find, jump to settings for the book. Let's see uh, what the settings do when you're actually in a book. Now, I haven't done this yet, but I assume the numbers would correspond to these. So if I choose six, I'm hoping it settings will pop up. And they have, oh, so you, you can actually, um, and if you've noticed before, when I was in the settings menu on the home page, that everything was numbered, so it would correspond to these numbers on the right. So if I want to choose, let's just say, rotate, I would press, I can go up and down, of course, or I could press number three, and it would rotate. And that's handy because, you know, so a lot of the times with D-pads, they're a little bit... Um, 
it's sometimes they could the you know a misclick could really screw something they're cluttered. up. And yeah, it's cluttered. They're all really close together. Because my thumb could pretty well cover every one of these eight buttons, so it's good to have these numbers. And it's actually quite unique. We haven't seen an Eevee with a vertical numpad on the side before. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the dictionary function that comes with it. So let's press number one just for fun. So it seems to highlight some words. So let's choose foolish. See what that brings up. There you go. Foolish, unwise, silly. So what you would do is we'll go through that again. Let's go to the dictionary option. And let's, it lets you highlight the words, and in your book, if you don't know what something means, for example, breadth, it's a word you don't hear on a day-to-day -day basis, let's choose that. There you go. And this dictionary function is really good because, um, especially when you're maybe just learning to read, or if you're an avid reader and you don't maybe know what a certain word means, it's really nice to be able to on the fly look it up. And it's not a, a really cluttered dictionary where, um, you know what it's like when you're reading a real dictionary and it'll tell you um, a ton of different features. Like this really gets to the point really fast. This gives you, you know, one, two, three bullet points, you know, as opposed to really long drawn out. This is how you pronounce it. These are different meanings. The, this is uh, different uh, ways that you can use this word in a sentence. This really just gets to the, to, the, to the meat and uh, potatoes of the matter. So this, this is a really nice feature, and as you can see, scrolling to words, it's really responsive. And again, this dictionary is just not available in English, but it is available in other languages as well. And I know on the Ataco site that they do have different language dictionaries that you can load into it. So uh, that's pretty handy. Uh, overall, we really like the device. It's uh, it's it's pretty affordable. Um, in a North American market, there's it's very competitive. Uh, for price-wise, generally that this this e-reader will go from anywhere between 150 and 175 dollars. Uh, if you live in North America, you know you can get a Kindle. You can get a Barnes & Noble Nook Wi-Fi, uh, even a Kobo e-reader that has uh, all larger screens and, um, you know, all, all those other e-readers have internet capabilities so you can update the firmware via a Wi-Fi connection. This allows you to go through some extra steps. Uh, some of the benefits as we see through here is that it does take batteries, so no matter where you are in the world, uh, Location-wise, batteries are easily accessible. Uh, we're a little bit spoiled living in North America, uh, more particularly Canada, where we have a lot of choices from Sony e-readers to uh, a ton of others. Whereas overseas, uh, there it gets more sparse as far as e-reader availability goes. So because the Jetbook Light reads a ton of different formats. Uh, you know, like we said at the beginning, it, it reads uh, Mobi, EPUB, PRC, RTF, text. I mean, it reads pretty well every format that you're going to find in ebook. So if you're more of a fan of downloading ebooks, you know, from the internet as opposed to buying them, this is a great device because pretty well any format that you download, this e reader will be compatible with. But because it does support Adobe DRM for ePubs that you can buy ebooks from official stores. Now, um, Jetbook, of course, doesn't have a store. There's no way to buy ebooks on this device. It's more or less putting you uh, in a position to load your books in here for you. And it does come with some free books. As you notice, that um, we had some books and genres, so it, it allowed you to really uh, organize uh, your ebooks a little bit better than a lot of other e-readers and the genre capabilities is something that I kind of like but all the books that come with it are open source uh, Project Gutenberg type books but it does come with the CIA World Book where a lot of e-readers uh, that we've seen does not have anything like that so that that's a pretty handy feature. Uh, overall um, 
for the money, it's probably, if you live in North America, you have more choice for this type of small screen. We'd probably recommend a Sony a PRS 350 um, because it is touch screen. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than this, but more bang for your buck. Um, the Sony PRS 350 doesn't have Wi-Fi as well, but as, in terms of hardware, it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty stable thing. It's ma you know, it's mainly like a, a plastic chasis, so you, you know, you could pretty well drop this and not really break it. So, uh, all in all, the Jetbook uh, Lite by Taco uh, is a worthwhile investment. So if you're looking for uh, a low to mid-range e-reader, we definitely recommend this, mainly because it does read a lot of e-book formats, but it has some drawbacks that it won't play music, it doesn't have any uh, e um, audiobook capabilities, it doesn't have any internet capabilities. So we probably wouldn't recommend this to your average user, we would probably recommend, you know, more internet capable e-readers like we mentioned before. So this has just been a, an overview of the Taco Jetbook Lite e-reader for good e-reader. This is Marcus. This is Nick. And everybody take care.